The Ashford Traditional is the most popular spinning wheel in the world and yet somehow in the 10 years I've been spinning I've never owned one until now. Hi folks, I'm Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio, a channel all about spinning and knitting and occasionally some other crafty stuff. So why did I want to get a traddy? First, when I do beginner related videos I want to use something that's a little bit more accessible to more people. Second, those of you who go to spinning groups or guild meetings will know that there is always one person in every guild who's kind of like a pit stop mechanic for spinning wheels. The first sign of someone's wheel being overly wobbly or squeaky or just not working properly, they rummage in their bag, whip out a multi-tool and set to work fixing it up. And I aspire to having at least a little bit of that skill. Because almost all of the wheels that I've owned have been modern, well-maintained wheels, I've never really had the opportunity to get some practice in with fixing up one that's a bit less well-loved. And if you want to start restoring wheels, the Traddy is a great place to start because many of the accessories and replacement parts are still available now and they will fit much older versions. So I started looking out for a Traddy to restore, but I was looking for a very specific version because aesthetically the only one that really appeals to me is the 1975 to 1981 version. I love the simple clean turnings of the wheel spokes and the maiden uprights and after 1981 they just got a bit too fancy and antique for my personal preferences. If you're interested in comparing the different versions or working out when your tradi dates from, Ashford actually have a timeline on their website which also tells you what mechanical or material changes there were in each version. I'll put a link in the description and the pinned comment below this video. It's also worth mentioning that because Ashford used up the parts from the older versions, you might come across wheels that have a mixture of parts. So for example, a 1975 drive wheel, but a 1982 maiden uprights, for example. When I first spotted this wheel on Facebook Marketplace, it was listed at £300 and I just hoped that nobody would pay that much for it because you could see from the photo that it was in a pretty neglected state, although it was intact, it just wasn't worth that much given the amount of work that you'd need to do to it and the fact that there was just one bobbin, no additional accessories, all of that stuff taken into account meant that it really wasn't worth £300. A month or so later the price had dropped and it seemed like there would be a bit of room for negotiation so I eventually agreed to buy it for £80. I bought it home on the train and then started to take stock of its condition and make a list of what I needed to do to restore it to its former glory. I tied a quick and dirty drive band, this is not my finest work, don't judge me, and um, functionally it was completely fine. As you can see here, the drive wheel wasn't 100% straight and true, but any little wobble was quite minimal and it didn't throw the drive band off, which is good enough for me. It's not uncommon for this age of wheel to have had a hub repair at some point, and this one had, but it was pretty messy and I was unsure if they'd actually managed to glue the hub pin in place. The pin goes through this hole and there was glue sort of covering the hole but it didn't seem to go all the way down. The crank was pretty rusty but there was no real clunking or squeaking when I was treadling. Some people might worry when they see a slight split in the drive wheel but that's just where the pieces join and because wood expands and contracts depending on the climate there can often be gaps like this. As long as those gaps aren't loose or making the drive wheel misshapen, then they're perfectly normal. The treadle connection was functional, the leather was a little bit dry, but other than that it was fine and the treadle itself was also in pretty good shape. The flyer was obviously a completely different colour than the rest of it, but there were some signs of use, judging by the little grooves worn in the wood at the front and near the hooks. And although there was some rusting on the orifice, the shaft of the flyer was actually in pretty decent condition. The original bobbin is just a completely wooden one, there's no plastic inserts or anything, so it doesn't spin particularly freely on the flyer, but it's sufficient. One thing I noticed though was that the flyer didn't want to turn when it was fully located in the front maiden. If I pushed it back a little bit it would turn much more freely but it seemed like the front maiden just needed to be rotated a little bit so that it all lined up properly. 
The Rear Maiden is one of the old style where you twist it to get the flyer in and out. I planned on upgrading that to the newer version where the flyer just drops into the Rear Maiden instead. One of the most neglected areas was the Maiden Adjustment Board. As you can see, the plywood wasn't in great shape and the hardware was quite rusted. It was also allowing the rear end of the board to slide around a little bit. And this is where the tension adjuster knob has gouged a hole in the plywood. So I'm going to be fixing that with a very high tech bit of engineering. I plan to also remove the rust and tidy up the wood. And this area in particular had a real transformation once I've finished with it. With the exception of this damage to one of the legs and this, I don't even want to know what that is, uh, the frame was actually in quite good condition. It was just hiding under a lot of dirt. It looked like it had just been stored in a shed for a couple of decades. So I started by giving it a good clean with a slightly damp cloth. And you can see how much crud came off it. At this point, I had a pretty good idea of what I was dealing with. So I started dismantling the wheel. When I'm disassembling a wheel or anything else for that matter, I always find it useful to record videos of the process as a reminder for when I come to put it back together. I started with the maiden adjustment board and then the crank. You're going to need two spanners or wrenches to take that off. Then the footman. and then remove the left leg to be able to remove the treadle as well. The original plan was to completely strip down the wheel and rebuild, which would have meant taking out the hub pin, which is in this hole. Usually you can just gently tap that hub pin out. And I tried a couple of very gentle exploratory taps with a mini screwdriver and a rubber mallet. And I noticed that the slight split in the hub seam on the other side was just getting fractionally bigger. So I stopped because I didn't want to do any damage. The likelihood was that the hub pin had rusted in place and any attempt to remove it might just make the problem worse, particularly because the hub seems to have been repaired with glue. And so too much force might just cause it to break in a way that's even less repairable. Eventually I might need to do a hub repair, but for now I just decided to leave it in place. As I was removing the screw that holds the front maiden bearing, there was a lot of resistance and then suddenly there was no resistance at all. And I realized that the head of the screw had just completely sheared off. So I was left with this and the rest of the screw was just stuck in the front maiden. So that was something else that I had to resolve. The next job was to remove the rust from any of the metal parts. I wanted to try to reuse the original parts wherever possible because they'd fit nicely back into their original locations. So I made sure to keep everything organized so that I could tell exactly where each screw would go back. The exception was that made in bearing screw. Obviously one had broken, but the other was also pretty corroded. And I was a little bit concerned that that one might also just break off. I used a rust remover or navel jelly called Genolite just because that's what was most readily available to me. It's a gel which you just paint on and you keep agitating it every few minutes so that it doesn't go tacky. And after about 15 minutes or so, you can wipe it off and the surface rust will be removed. Rust remover is pretty strong stuff. So if you are gonna use it, please make sure that you read the instructions and wear protective equipment. The results were pretty impressive, actually. The metal parts were all de-rusted and it was time to move on to the wood. These wheels are well made with solid wood, apart from the treadle and the maiden adjusting board, which are ply. So I sanded it all down and refinished it with a couple of thin coats of Danish oil. I tested the Danish oil on the underside of the treadle so that if I didn't like it, nobody's going to see that part. Then I had to deal with that screw that was stuck in the maiden. Because it was so small, it was hard to find a left hand drill bit or screw extractor for this size of screw. So I ended up having to drill all the way around it to get it out. Once it was out, I could see why it broke because the end of that screw was completely rusted in place. 
So then I had a big hole left. Um, so I managed to get hold of a beach dowel and I just drilled out the hole to the same size as the dowel, glued the dowel in place and then drilled a pilot hole for the new screw. Once that was all fixed up, it was time to start rebuilding. A little tip for reassembling, especially if you're reusing the same screws, place the screw in the hole and rotate it counterclockwise or anti-clockwise without any pressure until you feel it slightly drop down and then screw it in. That way you know that the threads are connecting with the original grooves that it created rather than trying to create new ones which might end up stripping the screw hole so it doesn't hold properly. Oh, and that high-tech piece of engineering I mentioned to fix the hole in the maiden adjustment board, that'll be a drawing pin. Everything went back together really quite nicely, although I had to try a couple of times to get the footman's connection to the axle right. If you're using an older traddy and you're finding that the connection to the axle keeps undoing itself, this is the part of the construction that's wrong. To reassemble the connection between the footman, or Ashford calls it a conrod, and the crank, pass the bolt through the conrod with the nut facing the back of the conrod. Add the standard nut and screw it onto the bolt, leaving a little bit of clearance between it and the front of the comrod. You might need to use two spanners to get that nut to stay in position. So you can see that there's a little bit of a gap there. Then thread the bolt through the crank and tighten it with the spanner on the end of the bolt, maintaining the gap between the nut and the front of the comrod. Then you add the nut with the conical end and that needs to face the front of the wheel. Hold the bolt steady while you use a second spanner to thread the front nut on. There should be a point where it's just not able to go any further. Then just back the first nut up against the crank. You may need to play around with this a little bit, especially if you notice any clunking or if the connection comes unscrewed as you treadle. I was originally going to keep the flyer with its existing finish, but once I Danish oiled the rest of it, the flyer just looked really out of place, so I sanded that back as well. The final result is a real transformation, and it really didn't take that long, didn't take that much work, just a little bit of sanding, some wood oil, bit of rust remover and a couple of spare parts, and it's looking really refreshed and works beautifully. I always recommend that beginners should try to buy their first wheel, either new or from another spinner, but sometimes those options just aren't available, so I hope that this video helps you if you decide to restore your own transformation traddy, if one takes your fancy. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out this video next, and I'll see you soon.